So this is activity number three in lab number eight on March 7, uh, 2023. Actually, this problem is from a previous exam. So uh, let me show you, first of all, what the breakdown of the, the marking scheme was here. Okay. And this obviously had uh, 26 out of 100. So uh, anyway, that's what it is. And pretty much there are no part marks or stuff that are not done correctly. Okay. Now, uh, the situation is as follows. We have a, uh, a cylindrical piece made out of steel like that and another piece like that. And this cylindrical piece is inserted into that block and the right end of the, the cylinder is clamped as you can see now notice that if there is no friction and we just insert this thing this block can move actually along that okay however uh, what you're told is that the edge the edge of this circle part of a circle and the edge of the cylinder they are welded together welded together means they're as if they were fastened together they're you know they, they move together let's put it like that okay so uh oh oh yeah this one is made out of steel this one is made of aluminum so i'm going to make sure that we do that and the load is you raise the whole temperature by 400 degrees pretend that you take this thing and put it in the oven and of course the right end of it is clamped or suppose that it's in an environment where the temperature rolls to 400 and you want to find the stresses etc oh it says 400 uh, above the room temperature so you, you, we talked about this thing in class there's two ways to do this one to make the room temperature zero and make this thing 320 20 or to make the room temperature 80 and make this thing 400 so you see that it says 400 above the room temperature so either you make this thing zero and make this thing 480 oh hang in there <laughs> no wait a minute just a second uh Whatever the room temperature is, is 400 above that. So we'll come that when, when, when we model it. 400 above the room temperature of 80 degrees. Okay, use as many planes of symmetry and use the appropriate elements. And when you see this thing in the context of the stuff that we're doing these days, this has to be done entirely with solid elements. If you go your own way, and try to do these some fancy stuff, making this thing with a beam element, making this thing with shell element. Well, well, as long as you do things right, I have no issue with it. But uh, if you make a mistake there, that's a serious point deduction. Okay. One other thing that you see in this test, it was said that uh, if it does not run, if things do not run, you make all the pieces, but things do not run, then automatic deduction of 35% based on this exam so it should run okay all right let's go ahead and make it. Uh, these dimensions three by three and radius one and this angle I believe is uh, yeah obviously this angle is uh, 90 degrees okay so let's go ahead and make it let's make the sill let's make the block first how about that so uh, we go uh, we start the product file immediately save it file save management save as that folder do not do not delete uh, this is activities lab number eight activity number three so we say okay good uh the thickness is two inches three three thickness of two inches okay very good so insert insert a new part in there and i'm going to call this thing the block properties block and block
on an screw maker on a convenient plane on that vertical plane I will sketch let's make a centered square by the way use as many planes of symmetry I hope you understand that in this particular problem there's only one plane of symmetry I'm just cutting it lengthwise I'm gonna make everything and then cut it uh, with a with a saw later on but uh, uh, this is three inches this is three inches okay good and uh, yep so let's draw a circle here can't remember what's the radius of the circle there uh, radius circle is one Okay, so uh, let's dimension this thing. Diameter two, radius one. All right, and then uh, here's the way I'm going to do this. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to draw a line from here to here, and then another line, another line from here to here. Oops, cancel. Let me draw, delete this. I want a line from here uh just one second now i think there is a problem uh let's uh, escape this oh yeah it's this angle see that this angle it's this angle this angle 90 degrees that's a constraint so if i take that and delete it good that color is all green now i'm going to do a quick trim uh, where is the quick trim? Okay, right there, probably. Yeah. And these are things that you should know by now. Okay, so just if you don't know it, means that or you didn't do your stuff before. So uh, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this line and that line, and that is this block. Okay, exit. Add it by two inches. Uh, two inches. Good. Okay, so uh, then I'm gonna insert. By the way, double I double click on the product, click on the flop. Oh, by, by the way, this one is made out of what? This is made out of uh, aluminum. Okay, let's apply material to it now. Uh, metal aluminum on this part. Now, uh, insert, insert a new part in there. Call it the cylinder. Cylinder and cylinder. Okay, let's go make it. Double click on the cylinder on that plane. I will sketch. Okay, so uh, what I would like to do is, uh, let me see for a second. Uh, I'm going to project the circle. And we may have to do some a little bit of cleanup here because it's not quite a circle, but that's okay. We will fix it. Uh, that takes care of this. And let's see now, we want to close that circle. So let's look at the view from the front. Uh, there are different ways of doing this thing. For example, you can say, okay, so I'm going to draw a Maybe an arc of a circle, like that. From here, starting from there to there, or any other way that you can do that. I don't know. Exit. And now we pad that by uh, 10 inches. Pad that in the other direction, 10 inches. Okay, uh, this is made out of steel, so metal out of steel on that part, say okay. All right, so uh, we can cut this, and to cut it, of course, we go to the product. We use the saw in the product because we can simultaneously cut it. So here's the saw uh, on this vertical plane. Both of these I want it to be cut, and it doesn't matter which side. There we are. So that's good. Okay. So we go all the way to the top. Click on the floppy. 
and uh, you know the product is saved the pin is uh, the cylinder is saved and the block was already saved because I clicked on the floppy now uh, this is pretty much it so we're gonna go to analysis and simulation generative structure analysis Katia sees two parts, immediately it meshes it. What I want to do is, uh, although I didn't say it in the statement of the problem, uh, but not in this problem, uh, I want a finer mesh for the inside of the cylinder, okay? So I want to show you how to do it. We already talked about that. Uh, so uh, let me do that. Uh, we're going to go, by the way, let's look at the mesh first. There we are. You can see this is a very tar horrible mesh, okay? Uh, but I want what I want to do is I want to make that thing at least smaller, uh, or oh, for the cylinder smaller uh, around the block, okay? Because the block is already has a small mesh. So deactivate that. Okay, so we go local mesh. This is the one that you want to block for the cylinder. And where do you want to refine it? So let me hide that. How about the surface of it? You see, on the surface, it's going to be elements that size. So let's check it out. Let me bring this thing in the front so you can see it. Uh, let's show me show me the mesh. Okay, you can see that around the surface. But of course, this is everywhere. This I, I could have done it so that it's not really all the way to the end uh, this this is an overkill there's absolutely no reason why you have to have a fine mesh here uh so this is terrible but at, at least i showed you how things are done you activate good now uh let's apply the restraints so uh for the, the end this end is clamped okay we have surface sliders here. So we have surface slider or roller on this face and that face. Okay. Uh, we told that the pin is inserted into that hole. So we create a contact connection between surface of the pin and surface of the hole. So this one is going to be, I'll, I'll give it a name. So this is going to be contact. No, let me call it surface of cylinder. And surface of the pin of, of, of the block surface of the block surface of the block just so that you know so for the first component the order doesn't matter I take the surface of the uh, the cylinder for the second component I'm gonna hide the cylinder and take select the surface of the the uh, what did I call it the, the block yeah Okay, and this is going to be contact. So where is the contact thingy? Face-to-face -face connection. There is your contact, and you select either from screen this thing, or you go to the tree and select it from the tree. It's entirely up to you. Say okay. Now, I was also told that the edge, oops, I was also told that the edge of this circle and the edge of the uh, cylinder or welded together. So let me go ahead and create a connection. Okay. Get this. I'm showing in the show mode. So anything that's bothering you, just hide it. Anything that's blocking your view, you can hide. Don't delete, hide. Okay. So let's see. Uh, we create a connection and I'm going to call this thing edge of the cylinder and edge of the block. Okay, that's the name. So for the, the order is not important. I'm gonna select the edge of the cylinder, this edge right there. This is from the cylinder. You can see, I'm not, if I'm not sure, I can hide this and select this edge. Okay, for the second component, I go here let me bring this in the front. Let me hide the cylinder. And this. These two are going to be fastened together. 
means they're perfectly bonded, means they're welded together, perfectly welded. Notice that a, cre a, a, a connection has been created here, which is represented by this little white dot. And go find the fasten, face face. This one is contact, you've used it. Fasten connection, click on it, select this, and it puts a fastener sign here for you, but this has nothing to do with fasteners, but that's the way it goes. Okay, that's uh, pretty much it. This time it will not bomb out because uh, I already took care of these connections. Uh, there may be some other issue. Oh, the load, the load. Okay, so the load is the entire assembly is raised by some temperature. So if you go to the load, we have used pressure before, we have used force, we have used acceleration before the test, and we have used a force displacement. Whoops, temperature fee. You click on it. The support is that entire assembly, okay? The support is that entire assembly, or you, I mean, you you may, may see, uh, let me just go ahead. Uh, the two ways of doing this thing. One is you can cre create it by uh, elements here, or you can go to the parts and select it. So let me select for element and this one too much part, and this is it. So this thing is going to be applied to these elements. Okay. We could have done it by parts too. We could have selected the part, but that's okay. Now, the temperature, notice that, let, let me, I'll fix this thing in a second. First of all, what, what do we say? It says 400 degrees above the room temperature, right? So let's let's just put down 400 and see what, what happens here. I'm going to put 400 degree, degrees, I think it was Fahrenheit, right? degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, good. So I'm going to say 400 I have to fix this because it's not right. And say okay. Good. Notice that it, it converted it to degrees uh, Kelvin because my units in temperature are Kelvin. So that's okay. Just leave it here for a second. Let me go change my units here. Uh, tools. Uh, what is that? Tools, options. Under parameter measure temperature, let's find temperature here. Temperature, change it to Fahrenheit. You say okay, and let's check our temperature here. The one that we just put in there. Uh, where is that? Uh, under load, right? Uh, load, load. Load, double click. 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But the question is, what is the room temperature? What room temperature is it using? So we say, okay, let's go to the, you see that under, uh, under, uh, under environment, see that environment right there? Property, material, environment, double click. It says, there is the room temperature. If the room temperature is not 68 degrees, what I can do is I can put either zero here so 400 above zero is 400 degrees above room temperature. Or if I if I put 80 here, if I put 80, if I put 80 degrees for room temperature, then I have to go and change this to 480. Do you see? You have to be careful here. So you either make 480 temperature raw temperature. From room temperature of 80, that's 400 degrees above, or you can make the room temperature zero and make this thing 400. They're entirely up to you. It doesn't matter to me. Both are correct, but any one of them is not taken care of. You lose the mark for that particular component of the course. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and save our analysis file, save management, analysis, analysis, save as in that folder. Do not delete. Lab 8, Activity 3, or you can give this thing, uh, uh, can leave it like this or uh, or uh, change it to a main name that you can recognize. Remember, for an assembly, you have to give me the product, all the parts, and the analysis. Any one of them missing, you're asking for trouble, we cannot mark it. So let's run it and see what happens. Hopefully everything is going to be okay. I don't anticipate any issues, but I always have to eat my words every time I said that. <laughs> so 
Freunde. Remember, these are uh, contact problems we are solving. I took a very fine mesh on the surface of that pin, which was totally unwarranted. But uh, we'll see. This is why I'm saying save your work in case you have to kill the job because uh, it was taking a long time that at least you have saved all your analysis stuff before you even try to run it. It's running. You should see that. The fact that that cylinder is not showing on the screen, that's because I hit it. It's going to be used. It's going to be used in the calculation. It's just that for display purposes, it's not showing. Okay, so let's look at the deformation. There we are. And uh, let's animate it. You can see that this is essentially an expansion problem, right? That's not quite. There is some, you know, bending and things like that involved too, but that's what it is. And if you look at the deflection, deflection, Change this thing to average ISO. Change this thing to material shading. There we are. So most of the movement is at this end. Uh, the other end is clamped. Therefore, there's very little movement. And if you look at the stress distribution, uh, yeah. So let's check it out. Now notice that uh, there's going to be big stresses in this area. And there's going to be big stresses in there because this is trying to expand. We're saying that, hey, you're clamped. You can't go anywhere. Big stresses. But if you look at the block, let's check the block first. Uh, let me, let me, let's only look at the block. So on the selection, just show me the block. Okay, at least you can see some stuff happening. And the reason that there's big stresses here, remember, you took that edge and welded that, seam welded it to the edge of that pin. So you expect these big stresses to show up there. Now, if you say, well, what if I wanted to see the stress here? Well, uh, if you really, if you want to look at the stresses here, then you have to create a, a group. So let's do that. Let me deactivate this first of all. Where is this? Uh, let me deactivate that. That's what groups are for. Let me make a surface group, only the surface. Okay, so uh, see now, where are the groups here? I think uh, this is the surface one, this is the line surface. So let's look at only the, the, the stresses, one meter stress on this surface, okay? Which is away from the, the weld area, weld location. So uh, if, you, if you activate this, and on the selection say, just show me the group, surface group. I don't want the block. Just want, I just want the surface. There. Now you could not have seen that, you could not have seen that uh, without actually creating a group. And I did the surface group, you could have done a point group, line group, a box group, a sphere group, etc. So that takes care of the activity number three. Good luck.